Today what I want to talk about is the make2d command. The make2d command, what that allows you to do, that allows you to take your Rhino design, uh, that allows you to take your Rhino design and allows you to create, it creates a, uh, a flat uh, orthographic and isometric view of that design that's built to the same proportions of your design so that you can use that uh, to present dimensioning information about your designs. And the um, Make2D is a really very powerful tool and you can also include this information, you can output it as an AI file uh, to be included as information in your uh, formal presentations. And, and especially in the image where you show the um, orthographic size of your design because what you can do is that you can take your design and put a bounding box around it using the bounding box command and we'll go over here and do the same thing. Put a bounding box command there and we may as well do it here. Although we'll get all our dimensions from these two views, the three dimensions. And what you can do is you do your dimensions, uh, linear dimensions, and that'll provide your dimensions for there, for your width. Go over here. This will get you dimensions for your uh, height. And here we can pull our dimensions for our depth. Okay, and, and so now we have the dimensions for our objects and an orthographic view of it that we can include in our presentations. And in this talk, I'm going to show you uh, how we go about creating uh, these make, two, make 2D drawings from our slab model. The critical thing that you have to remember uh, is that make 2D only works on surfaces. So one of the things that we're going to have to do is that we're going to have to convert our slab models to a uh, poly surface model, which is really good. Uh, we have a command for, for that. Uh, it's, it's, it's entitled uh, mesh. Uh, it's actually entitled NURBS to mesh. Um, mesh to NURBS, I'm sorry. Mesh to NURBS. It's entitled Mesh to NURBS. Uh, uh, and we're going to use that command to convert our object from the uh, OBJ uh, mesh model into a Rhino poly surface model that we can then use to pull our dimensions. Uh, and also note that because in our display we can display curves, you could do a composition where you incorporate these directly into your viewport uh, composition. So if I turn on curves here and I were to go up here and change my um, display let's choose a different display um, we're going to go from wireframe let's see what happens we go to rendered uh, we have our rendered display there uh, we have our rendered object with our funky background there gradient background but we also are able to display within that design our um, our uh, make 2d orthographic drawing but i'm going to show you more practical application and direct workflow that allow you to move that from Rhino into your composite designs within Photoshop. This is a lot of fun. One of the things that you should know about Make2D is that it only works on surfaces. So when you have a mesh slab file like this one, you want to convert it uh, to surfaces. Okay. And so I'm going to select this, this object. The way that we do that is that we type in, type in NURBS and you get mesh to NURBS, which is a command that com converts a mesh object. In this case, uh, it's going to uh, convert it to a group of uh, poly surfaces. Okay. And so once you've done that, one of the things that you can do that is if you wanted to, you could say edit select objects and you could uh, go down to polygonal meshes and you can hide those and now if you click on this you'll notice that it's a poly surface and it's something that um, mesh to nerves can read 
also notice that if you turned on ISO curves and if you turned on surface edges, you'd get those also here in your um, viewport display because those are active in that mode. Uh, from there, it's pretty straightforward. You start in the view, and I usually like to start in my um, perspective view. And I want to surround the object that I want to convert. And I'm going to type in the command make 2D. Make 2D. And you hit return. And you do four view. And I always uh, show target edges. I don't want to show my uh, hidden edges. And I want to uh, make two visible lines. And I also want my tangent lines visible. And it will take a moment uh, to calculate. And I'm going to pause it while it does. Okay, uh, the command has uh, completed. Um, and so now I um, want to, uh, next step now is to actually dimension those. So let's go to the top window. And here's our make 2D drawing. And what we want to do is uh, let's bring this in a little closer and tighter because it's kind of a little wide. I'm going to move it orthographically because I don't want, I want to keep, uh, you'll see why I want to keep them close to one another. I'm going to move these in a little tighter there. And now what you can do, now that you set that up, you can come over and select this and using your bounding box command, you can set a bounding box around that. And let's do the same here. And I'm just going to right click to repeat the command there and I have my bounding box and I, we can do and now what I can do is I can do a dimensions linear dimension and dimension that and I can come over here to this side and I have my end snaps on in case you're wondering and I right click again and select that and then I come along the top here and I get that also here and this is going to be equivalent to that dimension over here. So we'll, I'm going to do a bounding box just so that you can see that. And then I'm going to do a dimensions, linear dimension, so that you can see that those two actually match up. They're the same. Okay, And so it creates a really nice, accurate model representation of your model. Now, let me go in here, and I want to show you a couple things. Like, if you come over here, and this seems kind of small, I can go into my dimension, dimension styles, And I can edit uh, the, uh, the dimension style. And here in this case, my text height is set to uh, 0.75. I'm going to change that to 1. And if I preview that, that makes my text a little better. I'm going to make it 1.5. And oftentimes, uh, and so there goes my text, it's a lot easier to read, but not too big. Uh, and from here now, I can take this object right here, and I can select all of this, and I can do a file, export selected, and I'm going to save this as a AI file. So it's going to go out as a vector file, and I'm going to call this orthographic. And I'm going to show you, I'm just going to do a snapshot of the current view because we're going to use a visual. You're not going to use an actual construction document, but it has the accurate dimensions. And we're going to uh, move from here, and I'm going to show you how you could uh, incorporate that into a, um, into a, um, a Photoshop document. But more importantly, you should also note that it is a part of your document here, and you can use it as part of your composition in your rendered viewport when you output um, those images because if you look at your display here uh, those curves uh, with curves turned on those objects are visible you notice those are the curves and the other ones are annotations so you can turn those on and off to include them in your in your um, rendering presentation
so um, this is how your image comes into Illustrator and we're going to use Illustrator as a pass-through uh, we're going to use Illustrator as a pass-through uh, and as you can see here our lines one of the things that we see here is that our strokes are pretty uh, large here so one of the first things that I want to do um, is a hey, I think I want to get rid of uh, these outlines that I had in Rhino there uh, and I also want to um, select my objects right here uh, and I want to change the stroke weight to 0.5 and now the objects are a lot bigger. I'm actually going to make it even smaller. I'm going to change it to 0 0.25. Um, select these this way. And I'm going to change these to 0.25. So that you can see the um, illustration. And because they have these lines, I want to capture, sort of, sort of capture that. Uh, and it'll be different with different types of... Uh, uh, poly surfaces um, and um, it'll be different uh, it'll be different on uh, different types of poly surfaces the quality of the line but this is a artifact of the triangulation of it from um, bringing it in as a um, bringing it in um, from those uh, uh, mesh slabs and so that's why you have that that signature there um, and so let me bring this back uh, you can also come in if you needed to one of the things that you can do within Illustrator is that you can actually edit the text and I can come in here and I can change that number to 32 and I can come over here and I should have updated that at the beginning I wouldn't have to deal with that now and I could edit this. Like so. And if you wanted to, uh, you could uh, use your direct selection tool and grab elements like these. And perhaps uh, these you may want to have. a thicker line quality and so you can come in and uh, you can come in and uh, open up let me open up my stroke window so I can see that and I'm going to change that to point, uh, point 0.5 points um, and increase the stroke on those objects so that it's a little bit more visible uh, t to me as it is as it is here. Um, uh, and so those are some of the things that you can do uh, as you use um, as you use Illustrator as a pass through for your. Um, for your for your designs and it's a good password now you can uh, export this uh, or save it just save it over you can overwrite the old one and it'll create an updated version of that and uh, there's a lot of things you can do all the things with it here in Illustrator that you could do creatively to um, make it special and then uh, it's uh, pretty straightforward you can then just open that file um, within Photoshop and here I'm going to change this to uh, 100 and I'm going to change the size to 8 increase the size a little bit there and then I have it uh, as a um, curve on a transparent background and I'm going to show you how to incorporate that into your um, into your uh, viewport illustrations okay adding uh, now I'm in Photoshop and I've uh, used my uh, capture viewport to file viewport capture to file command 
to make a copy of my um, of viewport. And now I want to take the orthographic image that I made and I'm going to duplicate that layer and I'm going to add it to the render layer that I created. And I'm going to come back to the render layer and that's going to be larger and I'm going to take this and I want to make sure that that's selected and I can come now because that's on a transparent background hold down my shift key to keep it proportional and I can add that into uh, my Photoshop scene. One of the things that I like to do, I like to, uh, and once it's like anything else, um, if you wanted to, one of some of the things that you should note, and I'm going to make a duplicate copy of this so I have a copy of that layer. Um, and one of the things that you can do is that um, if you use Control uh, U, and I think if we didn't add, Uh, over here, let's try this. We'll do a control U and I'm going to um, lighten this up a little bit and I can make it white as it were uh, there if I wanted it to be white on a, on a background I could do that. If I wanted to um, also I could darken it a little bit and then go in bump up the saturation, colorize it uh, right here and bump up the saturation and now I can if I wanted to make it an architectural thing I could make it blue and I could color it a different color and those are some of the things that you can uh, do with that once you've created that and then you can also add layer effects to it if, like if you wanted to do like a uh, drop shadow to give it a little uh, dimensionality uh, you could do that so that it floats feels like it's floating above the design a little bit. Um, and so there are a lot of things that you can uh, do to enhance the the style of, of, of that. And also Outer Glow is another uh, nice one to use to help make that pop up off of uh, the page a little bit. Like that. You can do that, take that, and add that to it, effects to it to, to make that pop uh, so that you can build a really nice uh, composition in that way. And I hope this is um, helpful to you.